Hello everyone, this is Kuroda giving you a shoutcast and game one in a series between FXO's Minato versus Empire's, I guess I'll pronounce his name, Siu, um, in the opening sequences, S-I-W. I really don't know how you would translate that in the English language. Honey, would you know? S-I-W? How would you say it? Siu? Yeah, it, it, it sounds Chinese to me whenever I say Siu for a little. Anyways, let's take a look at the spawning locations and this map here on Worldwind. We see Empire and Empire's red Protoss player here spawning on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, we are going to see the yellow Zerg over on the far bottom left hand side of the map. So it will be full cross spawns. And I do believe that all spawns are possible on this particular version of Worldwind. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to start casting some games away from the TESL is just so I don't get pigeonholed in terms of the strategies that I see. If I was casting a TESL game in a PVZ, I would automatically assume that it would be a Mothership Core expansion and not the Forge Fast expansion that we should be seeing in this particular opening. So a couple of days, maybe one or two days out of the week, I will be casting something from the Zotac Cup or some other European tournament as well. One day, maybe I will be able to cast a ESL, T, uh, what, e e ESL, a Major League MLG game, or perhaps some other event overall. But right now, I'm happy in my own YouTube channel. Now, let's take a look at the strategy here. Minato is going for this Zerg hatchery first opening. I believe it was a 15 hatchery. Meanwhile, the Red Protoss looking to go for an actual Nexus first. The Nexus first doesn't come as a too big of a surprise for me, as this is a rather large map. If there is any map that you could go Nexus first on, this is perhaps the best map to try it, even though some Zerg players do in fact go for a 9 or 10 spawning pool, scout out the map extremely quickly, and then start to rush with Zerglings. Now, Red Protoss quickly scouts out and sees, you know what, the spawning pool is coming at a normal timing. I can pretty much do whatever I want here as the probe walks right by the hatchery. Oh, I cannot believe I'm seeing this. And now is actually going to construct three pylons. This is going to be a huge, huge play. The drone is going to make its way over, quickly notices this. And what are we going to see here? I believe this will actually be a waste of resources. Are we going to see this one um, hatchery canceled? No, the hatchery. Oh, Oh, unable to get to the creep just in time. It does spew over just a little bit as we are now going to be canceling this queen. Unable to cancel, but you got to remember that this is about 500 minerals of an investment. Now, it also does take away much of the production and the strategy that Minato was trying to use. Now, on the flip side, perhaps he could have run straight on by with those Zerglings and engaged on the front door. Are we going to see that? Yes, Minato going, you know what? I don't need to take down these this one particular photon cannon as of yet. Perhaps maybe I'll get some queens over there and take them down instead. Zerglings already rushing out across the field. You can see there are a lot of Zerglings there. Overlord going to get taken down. And this is very important. The fact that the Zerglings and those hatchery is still producing larva. This is going to give additional production for Minato for at the for the short, short amount of time. And now he's going to be rushing out with these Zerglings here. However, I do believe he was delayed far too long. And now with one probe there, he'll be able to make warp in a pylon and finish off this wall in just in time. Zergling does get taken down as we may see a new hatchery come into play. All right, it looks as though, yes, the larva will get taken down. There they go. Zerglings, what are they going to be doing next? They are going to be morphing into Banelings. What else? All right, a Baneling best bust about to come underway. You can see a second Photon Cannon already in position there. This could be very, very bad day in just a short amount of time. And there you go, Baneling busting, trying to make its way through. But a new pylon does come in just in time here. The Baneling unable to detonate. And wow, that was a huge, huge hit. Zerglings not trying to push their way through. Is it going to be able to make their way through? Yes, but too many Zerglings were lost in this battle. And a huge play and a huge hold here as the Zerglings are unable to get through once more. Back down over here, Overlords are in position to scout anything that does try to come up. It is 23 probes versus 21 drones. And as soon as that warp gate tech is started, I believe that will be the beginning of the end. 
All right, perhaps Minato could have gone for a quick tech to tier two and tried to use a Nidus network. That could be the follow-up play here with a Roach Warren. The problem is there is only one queen and one hatchery for production. That's going to be 10 larva a minute, but we can see that there is plenty of room in terms of supply later on. You can see that the Zealot now making its rounds, making sure that there is nothing out of the ordinary as the Overlords are all now rushing back home. Zerglings are going to be back over here as well. You can see that these pylons are in no way going to get taken down. And perhaps a better play would have been to have the Zerglings back at home, waited for that hatchery to go down, and then cleaned up the Photon Cannons with the Breathing Help. But we'll never know what would have been the better strategy as the Nidus Network is coming into play. Standard, standard reaction to try and get ahead once more. You can see that there is a Pylon over here, and now a Stargate coming into play. The perfect counter to any Roach... Um, Roach Nidus Network play as Zerglings are being trained. There is that one pylon there and you can see that there is a probe on patrol simply expecting this strategy. Zerglings now rushing all the way back home. Nidus Network about to be completed and this is going to be key. What will be happening here and where is this Nidus Network going to be popping up? What is going to be the next follow-up play? Let's watch and wait and see what's going to be happening. All right, it is just at the front door. Minato just at the front door with these roaches, thinking to himself, perhaps I can bust down the front door like this. I don't believe it will work. There's simply not enough units. And I think that Xiao is going to be able to hold on to this, especially with a mothership core in defense. Here we go. Roaches now looking to come together. Oh, a second Nidus Network coming into play as well. Are the units going to be able to back off here as the Mothership Core and the Queen and now is over as well. The Queen is that anti-air attack. Void Rays are going to be coming out as probes now coming out together. Oh, this could be coming very, very close as the Zerglings are now out. What's going to be happening? The probes are trying to take it down. It doesn't look like it will work and it looks as though the Nidus Worm does come out taking down a Zealot as well. All right, Roaches are out, and the Queen is coming out as well. Is it going to be able to take down this Void Ray in time? It looks as though the Roaches and the Zerglings are just engaging inside here. There's a force field on the ramp. No reinforcements. Um, no units able to make their way down onto the low ground. The Queen should just be engaging against the Void Ray. Not quite sure why it didn't do that from the start. It looks as though this is going to be a one base trade for both sides here as the Mothership Core now activating the Photon Overcharge. It, I believe that is going to be too little too late as the Nexus does go down and all of these pylons will get taken down as well. Warp Gates. Oh, sorry, the Warp Gates are vulnerable here. The Roach is now trying to make their way down. It does not look like it will be successful. Perhaps taking on another um, Stargate here would be the better choice as the Roaches are trying to look for more units that just free up and kill. There is a lot of Photon Cannons down here on the low ground. Roaches are now going up against all of those probes. Probes are taking a little bit of damage here. 52 supply compared to 39. And even though Sue, the Protoss player, knew exactly what was happening, the execution by... Um, by Monato was just uncanny and being able to hit two locations at once. All right, what is the follow-up play? We can see a Hydralis then now coming in. Is that Nidus Network still available on the front? Yes, it is. Is it going to be able to throw darts? No, they all decide to jump back inside as the Void Ray does finish off that Nidus Worm there. And now this Overlord, well, it needs to get the heck out of there. Coming back around, you can see... Hydralis then nearing completion. No macro hatch at all. Hydralis then perhaps will be getting groove spines. The Nidus Network does have a few units inside ready to go. Zerg is upside down on supply as the Overseer now doing a bit of flying around. All right, this changeling slithering across the field. Where is it going to go? What is it going to scout out? as the Void Ray looks to deal a bit of damage. This is going to be a bit of bad news for the Void Ray as Hydralis, yes, are all ready to go. Let's see where this new Nidus Network is going to be coming into play. There it is, and we are going to see a second coming of the Zerg. Zerg, very, very strong at this point on a map of this size, making a relatively large map, map feel very, very small. As the roaches are now perhaps unloading. Yes, they are unloading here. Are we going to get some creep tumors now? Yes, we are. And the roaches and the hydralis will be moving extremely quickly. Void Ray now attempting to pull back here, doesn't see a third base and thinks to himself, you know what? I still should have this. Meanwhile, Nidus Network coming in on the front door. It sh or Nidus Worm is going to get cleaned up here as the roaches and the 
Hydras are all unloading on the front door here. Is it going to be enough of an army? 38 supply compared to 29. This is going to be everything. But there is four Photon Cannons and a Mothership Core with Photon Overcharge. This is just simply going to be too strong of an opening here as the Roach is now backing off. This is not looking good whatsoever. One lone Zealot coming inside. It looks as though the Queen should be able to, and the Hydra should be able to take it down. No, two Zealots in that group. The Zealot quickly taken down there as there is still more Zerglings trying to rush back home. Void Ray still in the field. More Roaches being added. And I do believe that the Protoss player is just too well protected at this stage. Queen's now laying down a whole bunch of creep tumors. That will be an annoyance at most as the Hydralis, for some reason, letting one of their brothers die very, very quickly. Hydralis now going after the Zealots there. It looks like another Roach going to be coming in. Perhaps this base will finally be cleaned up, but the income discrepancy has been too much for far too long. Hydralisk and Roach is now about to engage. Hydralisk should be backing off here, should not be engaging or trying to tank all of those Photon Cannons. Photon Cannons will get taken down here in just a second, but the income, the income discrepancy is simply too large. 35, and let's take a look at the Harvester count, 49 to 24, a valiant effort by Monato, but Monato unable to really break through and now very much behind as we approach the mid game. Stalkers, sentries, oh, queen, and now out. What is the queen doing here? Why are the queens even on this side of the map? I'm not sure. What a horrible mistake there by Minato, as Minato should be backing, should not have even unloaded the units there. That was a, just a horrible, horrible play, as we do have a Colossus now on the field. About to finish extended thermal lance. Zerglings trying to hold the Zel center Zelnaga tower will be forced to pull back here as the Zealot is going to get surrounded and taken down. No, a little bit of a juke move there as the Zealot will finally fall. Colossi, Void Rays, Stalkers, Sentries. A beautiful battle in the midfield as the Red Protoss should win here very, very easily. Able to handle all of that pressure. Mothership Core well played and... Don't even better than a GG giving compliments to his opponent. Once again, this is, I believe, a bracket play or group play, not the finals from the Zotac Cup. Thank you, Zotac, for making these replays public and for even organizing this tournament. You guys have been doing Zotac Cups even from Warcraft three days, and I think you're still doing them now. Hats off to the sponsor, even though I am in no way affiliated with them. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one. Please stay tuned for game two.